But when I look at that team in comparison to the rest of the East, I just don't think they improve that much. And I think there's a real chance the Bulls don't even make the play-in tournament. They're going to have a terrible defense. They're going to have a terrible defense. They're going to have a terrible defense. Yeah. You know I have to troll these quote-unquote analysts who literally analyze basketball for a living. Now, when the Bulls made all of their free agency moves in acquiring Lonzo Ball, DeMar DeRozan, and Alex Caruso, the NBA national media was up in arms in disbelief that the Bulls went all in on these transactions to not even be that great of a team. And the reason they claimed the Bulls were going to still be bad is because they were going to have a terrible, terrible defense. I mean, among other things, they also felt that DeRozan was the worst signing of the offseason. Yeah, they also felt that Levine and DeRozan wouldn't fit together. Okay. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about this, quote, terrible defense of the Bulls so far this season in their first seven games. So what's going on, everyone? You are listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Look, guys, I know it's early in this season, and you could argue maybe we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. And yes, we probably are. But the narrative that was once touted about this Bulls team prior to the season has been anything short of of trash analysis and when it relates to the bulls defense even though it has only been seven games into the season you can get a sense for what this team's defense is going to look like so far this year it's not like all of a sudden this team's defense is just going to completely fall off as we get further into the season sure it might not look as immaculate as it has thus far but there isn't going to be a major downtrend shift barring any major injuries to some of their key players. Knock on wood, hopefully that doesn't happen since the Bulls already lost one of their best defensive players in Patrick Williams. Now, there are many ways you can measure a team's defense, but the most common metric is a team's defensive rating, and then I'll review more metrics as we get further into the video. Now, as it relates to the Bulls' defensive rating in these first seven games compared to the rest of the league, according to NBA.com, the Bulls are sixth in the league in defensive rating with an adjusted rating of 101.1. Again, no one ever said that this team was going to be the best in terms of their defense, but to say it's going to be terrible is a lazy analysis at best if you look at the full roster of this team and what each individual player can do on that end. And to be sixth in defensive rating in the league thus far is a great defensive team. The Bulls are also fifth in the league in terms of points allowed by their opponent at 101 points per game. The Bulls are eighth in the league in terms of their opponent's field goal percentage. Teams are shooting 43.2% against the Bulls from the field. The Bulls are 12th in the league in steals per game. They're fifth in the league in blocks per game. And they're seventh in the league in terms of forcing turnovers from their opponent. All great numbers in terms of the Bulls' overall defense. But the two metrics that stand out to me the most in displaying the Bulls' incredible defense so far this season is one, deflections per game, which measures how often a team is deflecting passes that either lead to turnovers or breaking up a play that doesn't necessarily lead to a steal. The Bulls are first in the league. They are the best team in the league in deflections per game. It's funny because I believe Casey Johnson, the Bulls beat writer, wrote an article prior to the season on his bold predictions, and he said that the Bulls would be top five in deflections this season, which I remember thinking that is such a specific stat line to make a prediction on, and thus far, he has been spot on. And you've been seeing it in Bulls games with the way that the Bulls are slapping away the ball in the drives to the basket, getting their hands in between passes and deflecting it out of bounds, reaching and invoking the ball out from their opponent's hand. They are pestering teams on every possession and getting scrappy on every play. And then the other metric that stands out to me is the number of assists per game they allow their opponent to generate. The Bulls are second in the league, only behind the Utah Jazz in terms of the number of assists the opposing team tallies against them, which is a testament to teams not being able to facilitate and generate offense as smoothly against the Bulls. Teams are being forced to play isolation basketball or getting points off second chance opportunities or at the foul line. And you saw that a lot in last night's game against the Celtics. The team had no flow to their offense, but guys were just hoisting up shots without passing the ball, which eventually caught up to them, and the Bulls took over and won the game in the fourth quarter. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not all amazing. There are some aspects of the Bulls' defense that isn't great, namely the amount of offensive rebounds they give up to their opponent. The Bulls are currently 23rd in the league in giving up offensive rebounds, and we've seen that. The Bulls have struggled in crashing the glass on the defensive end at times, and they do give up a lot of second-chance opportunities. They're actually also 23rd. 23rd in the league in second chance points to their opponent. And the Bulls also give up a fair amount of points in the paint, currently 20th in the league in points allowed in the paint at 47 a game. So not the best interior defense from the Bulls, which we kind of knew that would be the case, but uh, where they have excelled is in their defense on the perimeter and not allowing their opponent to shoot from outside. The Bulls are currently third in the league in three-point attempts per game by their opponent, fourth in the league in terms of those three-pointers actually being made, which is a testament to the Bulls' strong perimeter defense, thanks in part by guys like Lonzo Ball, Alex Caruso, Ayo Dusumu, 
Derek Jones Jr. and even Zach Levine, who has played decent defense on the perimeter. Also, get this, it's hilarious to me that Nikola Vucevic, at least based on defensive rating anyway, is seventh in the league in that category. For a guy that has never been known to be a great defender, thus far he has shown to be incredible on the defensive end, just behind Draymond Green in defensive rating. Alex Caruso is 11th in the league in defensive rating, and Lonzo Ball is 16th in the league in the same category. So look, as I said, I know it's early in the season. Like, we literally haven't even played 10 games yet to start the year. But early indicators show that this Bulls team is more than capable of being a strong defensive team. In fact, by a lot of metrics, the Bulls actually are faring better on defense than they are on offense which I don't think anybody would have expected after the moves that they made this offseason. Now, will the Bulls defense remain as competitive and strong as we have seen it thus far for the rest of the season? Maybe not as good as it's a small sample size, but I said at the top of the video, it is so unlikely for a team to just fall off when they start to show this type of trend on the defensive end. It just doesn't happen. Teams don't go from being an elite defensive team, hustling and playing with effort to just not caring anymore and playing lazy basketball. They just don't, unless there becomes team chemistry issues, team drama, major player injuries, which on the injury front, let's just hope that that's not the case. But as it relates to teams chemistry and the guys struggling to get along at some point in the season, that would make a player or player yours not try as hard and not put as much effort i just don't see that happening with the team based on how well they have worked together thus far and every player knowing their role and the common goal that they have in wanting to win it also helps when you have a great coaching staff that manages those egos and maintaining that team cohesion to where players are playing at the highest level possible no matter the circumstance so as I said prior to the start of the season, this team, if you look at the roster from top to bottom and you assess how each individual player is in terms of their defensive ability and how well they fit together in terms of their defense and offense, it is absolutely foolish to claim that this team is going to be terrible on defense. They're not going to be an elite defensive team, although you could argue with what we've seen thus far, they have been pretty close to being elite, but this Bulls team is going to be top 10 in the league on the defensive end, and their defense is what is going to enable them to win consistently throughout the season, as we have seen thus far. And let me just end with a tweet that our guy Rob Schaefer put out this morning, talking about the Bulls closing the lineup of Lonzo, Levine, DeRozan, Alex Caruso, and Vucevic in the Bulls' first seven games have an offensive rating of 110.2, a defensive rating of 88.3, which equals a net rating of 21.9. That is the best net rating of 31 five-man units that have played 40 plus minutes. That's incredible. I want to hear from you guys though. Have you been surprised by the Bulls defense thus far? Do you think that their defense could potentially get even better or do you think it'll start to level off as we get further into the season? Let me know in the comments. Also, make sure you're following me on Twitter and Instagram. The link to those is in the description. And as always, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan as I do post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in guys and I will catch you in the next one.